not merely seeing reality, it is touching the truth. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Chronic Gamer. My name is Matt and this is my final thoughts and redirect for episodes 4, 5, and 6 of The Legend of Korra Season 2. So go ahead, click the link in the description, check that out, come back here, let me know what you think in the comments section. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want to see the next two weeks worth of reactions, check out my Patreon. The link is also in the description. And over there I post early access reactions to all the videos I post here on YouTube with the exception of My Hero Academia and video games. So... Yeah, all right, so, um, holy crap. Uh, we picked up right where we left off with uh, Unalak arresting Korra's father and mother, whose names I'm totally forgetting. Um, didn't seem like he had a whole lot of proof, but uh, he was pretending to be fair about the whole trial and everything, but um, Korra was able to find out after the trial, after they were... After the mother was found innocent, but the father was found guilty, and they were going to kill all of the uh, the traitors, if you will. But um, because of Unalak pretending that everything went fairly, he pretended to be on their side, and oh, you need to spare them, please. Don't be so harsh. But Cora ended up finding out after the trial that Unalak ordered the judge to pretty much say everything that he said and that the whole trial was practically scripted so um that just confirmed all of my suspicions i mean we knew unalak was out for himself but uh we really didn't know the extent of it until now and it seems like he is just interested in power he has got quite a bit of power on his side already i mean he's got the whole of the northern tribe and seemingly uh a lot more than that on his side um it's coming to light now that he did initiate the attack on the southern tribe and start the civil war but um yeah this is crazy the waterbenders in this in this series are a lot like they're they seem to be the the big antagonists so far you know multiple waterbenders obviously it's not the waterbenders as a whole but individual people but it's kind of crazy how um, how much there's conflict with the waterbenders in this series. I mean, we had Tarlock last time. Now we have Unalak this time. I wonder what the next two seasons are going to have. They're going to have Wanatak and, and Humatak or, or something. I don't know. But uh, anyways, um, Korra has been taking a lot of things into her, her own hands, which in one, like, part of me thinks that that's her job. I mean, she's the Avatar, and she, that's probably the way she feels when she thinks of all this. I'm the Avatar, and I'm just doing my job. But in the same time, she's, she makes a lot of rash decisions. She doesn't rely on her instincts very much, as far as I can tell. She's not using the Avatar state to tap into her wisdom as the Avatar. So I think she's acting a lot like a spoiled teenager in these instances. And it doesn't surprise me that the officials like the president are telling her that she can't behave in these manners. You know, part of me thinks, hey, president, you know, you can fuck off because this is the avatar and she has, you know, the right to to govern and 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 make sure that the world is peaceful between all peoples and the spirits the way that she's supposed to and the way that her spirit has done for ever, I suppose, as long as this world has existed. So um, for them to tell the Avatar what to do is kind of insulting. Like, I don't know who the hell they think they are. The Avatar is the Avatar. I don't care who it is. Like, you show respect, in my opinion. But I guess, I don't know. I, I see it from both sides. I definitely see it when uh, they they tell her that she can't do certain things and 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 all that and and i do believe that using her avatar powers should be a last resort when resolving conflicts she should try to do them peacefully she should try to do them within the confines of the law created by the people but i don't know i guess in the end she's the avatar and it's really up to her i don't know but uh let me know what you think on that i guess in the comment section um, she ended up fighting her cousins because, 
Uh, they were ordered to by Unalak, and they thought that they killed her, and it turns out that she may be way worse off than I thought. I thought she was going to be okay, and that she was just going to go missing for a little bit, but she's washed up on this island that seems to be controlled by fire-bending monks. They look like, to me, they kind of remind me of the ones that we've seen in season one of the original series when Aang went to um, Kyoshi's, or not Kyoshi's, uh, Roku's, like, tower or something to speak to him. I forget the exact episode and what happened there, but um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about if you're an Avatar fan. So, um, yeah, they kind of remind me of them, but it turns out Korra has lost all of her memories. I don't know how severe the damage is yet. Um, we only just found this information out, but um, hopefully she will find out who she is sooner rather than later and get back into it. But I guess we'll have to figure out that next time. Um, I can't think of anything else, to be honest, so I'm just going to end the video here. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Chronic Gamer. Peace.